Hello everybody, this is John Finn with churchwithoutwallsinternational.org or cwowi.org. Talking again about things related to discipleship, learning about the things in the Lord today, talking about the blood moons and all the other stuff that's out there about the blood moons and, and this moon and that moon and this hurricane and that volcano. Who to believe, right? Who to believe? I mean, wouldn't it be great if somebody would have one teaching somewhere that could tell us definitively where to start. What's the foundation of understanding? Because there are so many voices out there and it's so confusing at times because everyone's saying something else and you gotta dig into the Hebrew here and you gotta get to know the calendar there. And you know, what if somebody came up with one teaching about the blood moons and the, the sun being darkened and all that, one teaching upon which we could understand everything else and upon which we could measure everything else so that if something didn't line up against what was stated by that one person, then we could toss it aside or lay it aside for future reference and consideration. Well, the good news is Jesus did define the, the definitive blood moon, sun to darkness, signs in the heavens type of thing. So you don't have to run around and look at this and that and that alignment and this and that. Jesus actually defined it. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31, Previously, from verse 8 all the way through, Jesus had been talking about what we call the tribulation, what's called in the Bible in, in over 300 references in the Bible to, to called the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, there's, there's so many references to it. And uh, Jesus includes in Matthew 24, 15, the, the thing that Daniel had prophesied about, that the, there would be a ruler who would come who would make a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. And three and a half years into that peace treaty, he'd enter into the temple in Jerusalem and, and break the treaty and betray Israel, and there would be a horrible time. In fact, Jesus said after that time, it will be called the Great Tribulation. There will be Great Tribulation that has never been seen since, since the beginning of the world. And Jesus continues in Matthew chapter 24 and verses 29, and he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, will come, the sun will be darkened, the moon will cease to give her light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heaven will be shaken, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, for, the, will mourn, for they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of glory with power and great glory, and he's going to send his angels and gather the elect from one end of heaven to the other. I like that. I like that he's, that he's gathering us from one end of heaven to the other and not from one end of the earth to the other because Jesus said at his coming, he's gathering the elect from one end of heaven to the other. So I like that. But I want you to see the terminology. The sun will be dark and the moon will cease to give her light. The stars and the powers of heavens will be shaken. That terminology, Jesus said, is at his coming. They will see the Son of Man coming in power and glory when all that happens. That is the definitive that is the definitive foundation upon which all understanding of all the sun and the moon and the stars and any signs in the heavens is built upon. If you can't trace it right back to after the tribulation at his coming, then lay it aside. Don't be afraid because of this moon or that moon or this alignment or that alignment. Jesus defined it right here. Now, where, where else might we find this terminology of the sun and the moon darkened and the powers of the heaven shaken? And that's a good question. In, um, in Acts chapter 2, from verses 16 through 21, 120 people are newly baptized with the Holy Spirit. They're just overcome with the power of the Spirit. And if you've ever, if you're Spirit-filled and you've ever been around the, the presence of God that overwhelms your physical senses and overwhelms your body, you'll know what it's like. They were accused of being drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. And Peter said, we're not drunk. He said in, in Acts chapter 2, verses 16 through 21, he said, this is that which was spoken of by Joel the prophet. Thus says the Lord, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions upon boys and girls, uh, young and old. I'm going to pour out my spirit all over the world. So that's interesting because Peter, Peter said, this is what Joel was talking about. In the last days, God says, I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. So the day of Pentecost, people, began the last days. Sometimes you'll get, you'll get people asking, do you believe we're in the last days? And the answer that biblically is, Peter defined it as saying, on the day of Pentecost, nearly 2,000 years ago, that started the last days. 
What is it, Peter? What are you guys doing? This is that which was spoken of by Joel the prophet. In the last days, I'm pouring out my spirit all over the earth, every gender, every, soci every socioeconomic class, every nation, every ethnic group, I will pour out my spirit. Now, how long does this continue? Oh, by the way, the fact that he said that these are the last days, uh, he, he said, in other words, as long as we're in those last days, the things of the Spirit will continue. In other words, tongues has not passed away. Healing has not passed away because God is still pouring out his Spirit all over the world. And he, But these are like bookends. He said, this is that which was spoken by, by Joel. This is the pouring out of the Spirit of God's flesh on all mankind. There's another end to that bookend. He continues and he says, after he says, on my servants and on my head maidens, I will pour out my Spirit, says the Lord. And then he concludes with the other end. How long will this go on, Peter? And he says, I'm going to show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord. But whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The great and terrible day of the Lord is a reference to Jesus' return. And there we have the blood and the fire, the vapor of smoke, the signs in the heavens. That's exactly what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. After the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will cease to give her light. The powers of the heaven will be shaken. It's exactly what Joel was talking about, what Peter's quoting in Acts chapter 2, verses 19 through 31. So we see that from the day of Pentecost until you see the great and terrible day of the Lord, the second coming, the Holy Spirit is going to continue to be poured out on the earth. He doesn't leave during the tribulation. He's still here. People get born again during the tribulation. Yes, they will. That's what it's all about. Read the book of Revelation. And... Uh, and so we have these markers here. Here's another one. You say, okay, could, could Jesus' reference point about the blood and, and the sun and the darkness and all that be elsewhere? And the answer is yes, in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation from chapter 4 on, after chapter 5 on, is about Jesus opening the scroll that he receives from the Father. Seven trumpets and seven, um, seven uh, vials that are poured out, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials that are poured out. And so, um, and so when Jesus opens each of these, you've got to understand the first of each tr uh, seal, trumpet, and bowl are the same thing. For instance, the seventh, which is the number of completion, uh, is the same thing. The seventh trumpet, or except the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet, the seventh bowl is all the same thing. It's the number of completion. It, it is when it, that is opened, blown, and poured out. It says it is finished, it is done, there's silence in heaven because the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and he will rule forever and ever. But the number six, the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, the sixth vial is the coming of Jesus. Two of those three things talk about the, the Euphrates being dried up so the 200 million man army from the kings of the east can come into Jerusalem and face at Armageddon. It specifically names the Valley of Megiddo, the Armageddon, uh, to face the Messiah and to, uh, to be put down by, by the coming of Christ. But, the, but in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17, it says this that's talking about, in fact, I'll read it here. It says, when he opened the sixth seal, there was an earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, the moon as blood, the stars fell to the earth like a fig tree cast her untimely figs, the, the, the heaven departed as a scroll, and the kings of the earth hid themselves in the mountains and in caves, and they said, fall on us, hide us from the face of him, who will protect us from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great and terrible day of the Lord has come, who is able to stand in his presence. So there we see the same terminology at Jesus' coming. So Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31, Acts chapter 2, verses 16 through 21, and Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17, we all have the same terminology that Jesus used after the tribulation of those days. Sun will be darkened, moon will give her light. Elsewhere it talks about the sun be darkened, the moon uh, be turned dark like blood red, uh, the powers of the heavens being shaken. All of that to say this, stop getting upset with this book or that book or this website or that website that says, oh, this alignment is happening and we're having a blood moon here and a blue moon there and a harvest moon there and what does it all mean? And you know, if you take this and the Jewish calendar, oh, you're wrong because the Jewish calendar says this, so you can't go by the Gregorian calendar. And it's like, well, just, just relax, folks, just relax. Go by what scripture says. The main blood moon, uh, 
you know, sun being darkened, wearing sackcloth that is darkened, etc., is going to happen at the return of Jesus, as defined by Jesus in Matthew 24. The whole purpose for sharing that little study is to say, go by the peace of God in your heart. Don't let your mind be confused with all the different voices out there. Go back to the Word. Go back to the scriptures that I just mentioned. Study them out for yourself, and you'll see that's the real thing that, that will happen. That's not to say that there aren't alignments and there aren't signs and wonders and things in between, but I'm saying they don't make up our life. We don't go chasing them. You don't go digging around, kind of like the rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar, where there's a song in there that says, what's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Tell, what's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Stop being a what's the buzz Christian and start focusing on just the word and the peace in your heart. The love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, patience, meekness, the fruit of the Spirit, that's what he's called us to do. Relationship-based faith. I was, I was hungry, thirsty, naked, sick, in prison. You, you fed me, clothed me, watered me, visited me. That's who Jesus is looking for at his return. Not people staring around looking for alignments and dates and stuff like that. Just live your life focused on what is Jesus asking you today to do today and be at peace with that. I hope that brings some balance in there. You can lay aside the other things. If something causes you fear, if something causes you confusion, just lay it aside for another time and say, I'll examine this later, but it's not my life. And I'm not going to spend my time wasted on digging here and there when right before me are people in need and, and, and things that the Lord is asking me to do, to grow in in him. Just live your life in him. Very simply, don't complicate your faith. All right. Hope that helps. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.